Hello and welcome back to my garage. I'm Jeremy and this is the Cut 65 DS Plasma Cutter from YesWelder.com. They sent this to me for free because they know I work on old rusty cars and they thought I needed some help. So I got to test this out over the past couple weeks and I'm going to show you what I've learned. So let's get started. Now straight out of the box, the plasma cutter comes with everything you need except for two things, which I wrote on my workbench. The first is an air compressor, the second is an air hose fitting. When you get this out of the box, there's actually a few things that you need to assemble. Right here is the pressure regulator. You're going to need to attach this to the back of the plasma cutter with this little bracket and a couple of Phillips screws. You're going to need to connect the air hose from the regulator down here to the bottom of the plasma cutter and you're going to have to put the gauge on it with some Teflon tape to make sure it seals. This right here is an air hose fitting that goes to my compressor, and this is an automotive style fitting. If you're not familiar with air compressor fittings, there's actually two styles that are commonly found. The one on the left here in my hand is an automotive style, and this is more of like a industrial style or something you might find on like a construction site. These are just two normal styles. You'll find both of them in every hardware store most likely. You just got to figure out which one is what you're using and make sure you get the right one for your plasma cutter. Cruising around the front of the machine, you'll actually notice there's a few wires on the bottom here. This big fat one on the right is the ground wire, and then on the left you have the actual torch connection, which has a couple of wires coming out of it as well. They're really easy to connect, you just kind of screw the little knobs on and it all goes together. It takes like one minute, super easy to do. The ground clamp is actually a pretty sturdy ground clamp that I like. It looks like it has about four gauge wire hooked up to it. And it's very strong. The only criticism I have for it is that it looks like it's a four gauge wire going into an eight gauge um, ring connector. So there is some strands of wire that are kind of hanging out. So what I might do is just buy a four gauge ring connector and hook it onto this wire a little better than it is because I'm sort of expecting this wire to snap off at some point. The torch is actually a pretty nice torch. I like that it has this yellow safety on the bottom. That allows me to lay it down on my workbench or the ground and not worry about the button being pushed when I'm uh, not expecting it. The other thing that I like is this spacer, this like chrome ring around the end, that allows you to space your torch away from the metal the perfect distance so that it cuts in a really nice cut. So not all plasma cutters come with these things. Sometimes you have to buy them like in the aftermarket and attach it to your plasma cutter. So it's nice that this thing comes with one. If this is your first time using a plasma cutter or looking into one, one thing that you should know is that the tips on the plasma cutting torch are actually consumable items. So these sort of things will wear out the more you cut with it. And when it wears out, you'll lose your ability to make a nice clean cut. So whatever plasma cutter you buy, whether it's the YesWelder.com one or not, you should make sure that you have uh, plasma cutting consumables available for that item so that when they do wear out, you can get some extras. They're usually pretty cheap to buy. I haven't actually looked up to see how much these ones cost, but I imagine they're probably reasonably priced. I now have this plugged into a 110 volt outlet, but it does come with an adapter to actually hook into a 220 as well. So we'll actually do both of those and I'll show you the difference in a minute, but let's turn this on and I'll show you what some of these settings are. To start off with, you can see up here, we have 123 volts coming into the machine. So that's pretty good, strong voltage. Right here, we have a air pressure check. So if I push this, you're gonna hear air pressure. And that's basically just purging air through the torch so that you can make sure that there's air hooked up and your compressor's working and everything. Up at the top here, there's a 2T and a 4T setting. So let me explain what that means. So I turned off the machine for just a moment so I can explain what 2T and 4T mean. And 2T is actually two touch and 4T is four touch. So here's how it works. Two touch is you pull the trigger and as you're holding the trigger, the torch is, you know, plasma cutting. When you let go, the plasma cutting stops. That would be 2T, two touch. Four touch means you 
click it, and it starts plasma cutting, and then you let go, and it continues plasma cutting. And then when you want to turn the plasma cutting off, you click it again, and then you click it off again. And by doing that, you're basically letting the plasma cutter run without you holding the torch. That might be good in some scenarios if you're cutting a really long piece or something, or you wanted some more maneuverability or couldn't fit your fingers into some place, then you might want to use the 4T mode. For my usage, I pretty much will always stick with a 2T mode. Over here we have a dial, which actually has two different functions. Obviously it's a dial that will make the uh, numbers go up and down, but it's also a push button that goes through the settings. Now the first dot here is actually the Max Pilot Arc LED, which apparently is used for when you're cutting expanded metal or something like wire fence where there's spaces in between a whole bunch of cuts. And this keeps the cut going for a certain amount of seconds in between each cut, the way I understand it at least. I rarely, if ever, use that feature, so I, I don't have a good way of testing it because I don't have any expanded metal in my garage. The next one is actually the pilot arc current. So this is the current that you would set for your pilot arc. And the pilot arc is actually like the flame that comes out at the very beginning of the arc, and apparently that gets your, your plasma cutting started. I am not super familiar with those two settings, the max pilot arc time or the pilot arc current LED. I've been kind of fiddling around with them this week and I haven't found the right settings for them. They don't seem to make a huge difference in the cutting that I do. I just basically cut normal plate steel. I don't really do much of anything else. The next two settings are the ones that make the most sense to me. The third one is the amperage, which when you're connect connected to a 110 volt outlet, you have up to 45 amps and as low as 10. But if you connect it to a 220 outlet, you get up to 65 amps cutting power. So that's a pretty nice setting. Let's go on to the next one. This is the post flow air. So when you're done using the torch, there's a bunch of air that comes out of the torch when you're done cutting. And this is how many seconds that air will come out of the torch. So I have had this set on about 10 or 15 all week and that seems to be fine. It's just basically cooling down the torch. I'm not sure what the appropriate setting is. I'm sure that there's one uh, for the professional plasma cutters out there uh, on the internet. They can tell me what it is. Feel free to let me know in the comments because I don't actually know the answer to that. I think we've now covered all the basics, so let's just cut some metal. So I just cut out the metal and all looks good. I had a little bit of trouble breaking the metal apart, the cut metal from the non-cut metal. And that's just because I had turned the welder down because I thought I could get away with 40 amps, but I really needed maybe 45 to 50 to really cut through. So the spots where I actually used uh, about 50 amps, it actually cut really good. I was just turning it down to see if I could get away with less. And I couldn't. So this is eighth inch steel and looks like about 50 amps is probably about right. So it doesn't make a clean cut. It's just if your hand is wobbly, then, you know, it doesn't make as clean of a cut. So you can see down here, it actually came out really nice and smooth. It's just, you know, if the wood that you're resting against is bumpy, then the cut will be bumpy too. One thing that I'm dying to try is if it will cut through half inch steel using 110 voltage, which is 45 amps. If it doesn't, we'll crank it up to 65 and we'll see if it'll cut through half inch or not. But I'm dying to try it, so I don't know. Let's see what happens. But then I tried to do it and the plasma cutter was just stopping itself for some reason. I don't know if it has some sort of like too much metal setting or something wild like that, but for some reason it kept stopping itself and didn't allow me to actually complete the cut. It just, you know, ran for a second, stopped, ran for a second, stopped. And then I decided to plug in the 220 and crank it up to 65 amps and cut it out.
Then I kind of felt like I was on a roll though, so I decided to cut some more angle iron, just for the sake of cutting stuff. All right, so to wrap this all up, the Cut 65 DS is definitely a great starter plasma cutter. The one thing that I would highly recommend though is that you have a 220 volt outlet to start with because when I was cutting with 110 volt plugged in, it just wasn't cutting a lot of the metal that I have hanging around my shop. Once I upgraded to the 220 volt outlet, then I could cut up to half inch steel and it wasn't a big deal at all. So if you're gonna get this, I would definitely highly recommend you get a 220 volt outlet to plug it into. Um, another thing, as I mentioned earlier, is this four gauge wire into an eight gauge connector, or at least it appears that way. I'm gonna upgrade this. Um, the instructions definitely could be better. Something that they should include in the instructions is that the um, pressure regulator should be set to about 60 PSI. I had to email them for that information. Uh, they may be including it in newer versions. So if you get yours, it might even say it in the instructions. Uh, the other thing to note is that the pilot um, settings on this, I still don't entirely know what those mean and I am just not the expert in that area because I never ever cut uh, like corrugated steel or, or expanded steel. Um, so I am just not the expert in that area so I'm not really sure what settings to use. I could wind them all up and down and they didn't seem to make a difference in the kind of stuff that I was cutting in my garage. Um, the amperage works, the, um, the post flow settings are great. Uh, overall, you know, a decent plasma cutter for the price. So if you're looking to get a plasma cutter, yeswelder.com is certainly uh, a decent option for you. Um, just make sure, you know, it's gonna work for whatever you're gonna plan on cutting. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. All right.